So, you've just recently finished your current indie game project and you're ready to let other people play it for themselves. In today's video I'll be teaching you step by step how to install a very cool tool called Eno Setup and then go ahead to use it and create your own setup file for your game. If you haven't already built your game in Unity, I'd highly recommend checking out the previous video in my series, which I have links to in the description and in the cards above. If you've already built your project and it looks something like this, then you are all ready to go. Good everyone, my name's Alex from the Programming Juvenile and welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you run down to the comment section and tell me all about your current indie project. And you know, why not subscribe while you're down there? And if this video gets, let's say, 23 likes, I will choose at random one of your suggestions for an upcoming tutorial series. So make sure you like on this video, comment down below what you want me to make a tutorial on, and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on my upcoming content. That sounds reasonable, right? Anyway, enough of this channel, let's get straight into it. Now, if you've followed the steps from the previous video in the series correctly, you should have a folder that looks like this one. If you haven't, it's fine. Just go back to the previous video and follow the steps carefully. If you do have a folder like this, that means you're ready to start working on your setup file. Firstly, we have to download and install EnoSetup. So I'm going to open up Google Chrome and search for EnoSetup. Sorry about the bad spelling. Now, as you will see, it should be the very first thing that comes up. I'm going to click open this link here so they can direct me to their main page. Now, one of the first things you'll notice is that the website kind of looks a little old, but don't let that bother you. Once you've got the software, you'll never have to look at this website again. What I'm going to do here is click on the download Eno Setup link. This takes me to the download page for Eno Setup, which looks even more confusing than the last page. But don't worry, we're nearly there. On this page, you need to look near the top of the page just under Eno Setup Downloads and click the Stable Release link. This will take you further down the page to where you can find our download. Then at about the middle of the screen, you'll find the download we are looking for. Today, I'll be downloading version 6.0.3. All you've got to do now is select your download site, which I've never actually fully understood. But every time I've downloaded the software, I've always clicked the US link. So that's what I'll be doing today. Once you've clicked this link, you'll notice that the download will appear at the bottom of your screen, if you're using Google Chrome, or else it will appear somewhere else on your screen. But whatever internet browser you use, it should tell you that you are downloading something. Once that has fully downloaded, you can open the setup file for Eno Setup. Oh, that's a bit confusing. You can do this by either clicking it down here on Google Chrome, or you should find the file in your downloads on File Explorer. After a few moments, it will ask if you're okay with this application making changes to your device. Make sure you select yes, or else you'll not be able to install this software. Then, after waiting for a couple more seconds, it will ask you what language you want to run the setup with. I'll just keep it as default, English. From here, it is a very basic installation process, so you just make sure you do what I do, and everything should be alright. If you wish, you can go through and read the license agreement. I've already done this, so I'll accept the agreement and continue with the installment. Here you'll be given the opportunity to decide where you want to install the software. I'll again keep this on default and install it to my program files. Also, if you have a look down at the bottom of this window, it will tell you how much storage is required to install the software. It is a very small software, so you should be fine. But you can always check how much storage you have left on your device by going into your storage settings. The next page, you can leave default and just press the next button. Here, you'll be given a couple options. If you wish, you can create a desktop shortcut so you can find the software easily once it's installed. And I'd also recommend leaving this ticked as it will make using the software and finding its files much easier. And then finally, you can select install. This software has a very quick install time, so after a few seconds, it should be all finished. And there we go. Now I quickly just want to deselect the launch Eno setup option, because there are still a few more things to do before creating the Eno setup. Firstly, we need to make sure we have all our build files prepared and ready. So locate and open the build folder from the previous episode and right click on an empty space and create a new empty folder. I'll be naming this new folder data. If you really want, you can name this folder whatever you want, but I would recommend the name data. Now, holding down the control key, you can select your game's old data folder, the mono bleeding edge folder, the unity crash handler, and the unity player. Once you have all the folders and files selected, you can drag them all into your new data folder, leaving just a data folder and an executable file. Now all our files are ready to create the setup. I'm now going to open up Eno Setup by searching for it in the bottom left corner, but if you create a desktop shortcut, you can just use that. 
immediately a large blank screen will appear and in the center you'll have a welcome window. Here you can look to the new file section and select create new file using the script wizard. This means we'll be able to make the setup file without programming it and instead just selecting some options. Of course in the future you may want to learn how to program your own setup files so they can be more advanced and interesting but for now the setup wizard will do just fine. Now we can click the OK button and that will open the setup script wizard. Here you can read a little bit about it, but I'm just going to press next. Here you'll be able to fill out some very basic information such as your application name, application version, application publisher, and application website. I don't have an application website so I'm just going to leave that blank for now. Next there are a few more options concerning where and how the application will be installed to the user's device. I'd recommend leaving this as it is as these are the exact options we want. Here on the next page there are a few options for setting up all our application files. The first option is the application main executable file. This is the file that you open the game with. To find your game's executable file you can click the browse button and locate your game's build folder. I have this folder on my desktop so it's easy to find. Once you've found your build folder you can select the executable file, not the data folder, and then click open. Then these two quick options here can be left as default as they are perfectly fine as they are. Of course if you want you can deselect the option to let users open up the application after setup has finished. But I don't see why you can't have that selected. But make sure that the second option here is deselected because our game does have a main executable file. It's that file we located before. The next thing to do is add all the other application files. The step is super easy because we have already put all our application files in a folder ready. So select the add folder button and again just find your game's build folder. Once you have found the folder you can select the data folder we created before and then press ok. Then make sure you select the yes button or else all the data in the subfolders will be lost and the game will not run after installation. Now we are ready to move on to the next lot of options. I'll be leaving all these options as default, but if you like you can go through and change some of them. On the next page you'll get the chance to add your own text to the setup file. You can add a license file and information files that show before and after installation of your game. To create these files you can just simply create a new blank text file and write whatever you want into it. You can create a file for each option and then put each file in its correct spot by locating it by clicking the browse button for each option. Of course, if this is just a very casual thing for you, you can just leave these blank and just let the user install it. But of course, if you're trying to be more professional, you should probably fill these in. On the next page, you can select what language options you want the user to have for the installation. I usually just select all, just in case someone installing my game doesn't know how to read English. Now, on the next page, we will find the last lot of options. These things are just to simply tell Eno Setup where you want the new setup file to be. First option is called custom compiler output folder. Again, this is just where your setup file will be after Eno Setup has created it for you. So I'll click the browse button and create a new folder on my desktop called IC Block Setup. The next option, compiler output base file name, is just what your setup file will be called. I will call it IC Block Setup. After this, you can also select an icon for the setup file. I haven't already created one, so I'll just leave it as blank. If you leave it blank, it will just use the default setup icon, which I think is kind of cool anyway. Then finally, you can create a password for your setup file. This is if you only want a certain group of people to be able to install your game. So if you're planning to make this game public, be sure to leave this blank or else not everyone's going to be able to install the game. Now we have all those options done, we can press the next button and then next again and then finish. This will automatically program an entire setup file for you and immediately give you the option to compile the program and create your setup file. So press yes. Then make sure you press yes again to save the program before compiling it. This will bring up a file explorer where you can decide where you want to save the program. I'll be saving it in the IC block setup folder. I will name it setup script and press save. Now at the bottom of the screen you'll see your brand new setup file putting itself together. There is also a small green bar you can watch to track its progress. This process shouldn't take too long at all but it will require a minute or two maximum. And there we go, it's all done. You can now exit out of the software and open up your game's setup folder. And you will see your game's new setup file sitting there waiting for you. If you've followed all the steps correctly, you should be able to open up the setup file and install your game. I will quickly test out my setup file now. And there we go. I just told the setup file to create a desktop shortcut, so now I can easily open up the game from here. If everything has worked for you, then congratulations, you've done it. Now all that's left for you to do is give your new setup file to all your friends so they can play it. 
but how am I supposed to do that? And what if I want to make my game public to the world? Don't worry, in the next episode of this tutorial series, I'll be teaching you how to put your game onto a website called itch.io. I'll be teaching you step by step how to create a small, little website for your game, and then teach you how to choose who views your game whether you want it to be public or just for friends. Of course, if anything went wrong for you during today's tutorial, be sure to go down into the comment section below and tell me exactly what's wrong. I'll be sure to respond to any questions as soon as possible. And who knows, if I don't manage to find your comment fast enough, maybe someone else will. You can also join the Programming Juvenile Community Discord if you're looking for more help, or just want to come along and talk to some amazing game devs. You will find everything you need about indie game dev on this community discord, so be sure to click the link in the description to join. There is also another link to it up here on my channel page. If the next video of the series is out already, you should find a link to it in the description and in the cards above. And if I get my tags right, it should come up on the side as a recommended video. If the next video in the series is not out yet, then be sure to check out the rest of my channel. Anyway, thank you all for watching. If today's video helped you out, then be sure to subscribe and share this video to all your friends. Anyway, I hope you all have a great rest of your week. See you next time.